Sometimes when I make videos on small items like this, they're supposed to be just a short video, but they turn into a huge video. However, I don't think that's going to be the case with this one. Now, just before I start, uh, some postage, uh, some postal stuff arrived this morning. And uh, these arrived from a chap called Jay in America. And very nice gift, thank you. Um, he didn't tell me, he said he had a, sort of a surprise for me and post these through. He wouldn't tell me what it was. So um, that arrived today and the surprise is some Sharpies. Um, the interesting thing about this was that to ship them here from America cost $13.50. Now, in the last video, I had a bit of a rant about how much Royal Mail cost, but the United States Postal Service has just has made them look like a veritable bargain. $13.50. Now, I know that for if I was to post these back, it would cost £3.52. So let's do the maths. A current exchange rate is it's somewhere between 1.2, let's say 1.3. So £3.52 times 1.3 means it would cost $4.60 to actually send that back. So what is the United States Postal Service doing? Are they trying to destroy e-commerce? It's, it just seems really odd that, you know, Western postal companies are charging so much. It means that uh, when people say, I'd like to send you something, take to bits, I have to remind them that, you know, the postal cost of sending that from America to to Britain would just be astronomical. Um, so that's uh, that's odd. But thanks, Jay, for those. Much appreciated. Let's move on to this. Now, this came from Pound World, and it's the little Cobb LED light. Now, there weren't many of these left in Pound World, and they were all in bits. It's like people had taken them apart, and all the button cells were lying about, the covers were lying about. People must have been opening them and trying to turn them on and try them to see what they look like. So um, I had to actually fish through the, all the packaging and find all the bits to make one up. So it comes with the two uh, 2032 button cells, the CR2032 lithium cells. The 2 oh meaning 20mm diameter, the 3 2 meaning 3.2mm thick. I uh, just thought I'd mention that again. And it also comes with this little plastic disc that insulates the batteries from each other. And the point of that is just to, so that you can ship it without it being turned on in the packaging. So let's see if we can put this back together. Right. So it has, just like the standard, it's got the standard chip, you know, the sort of bike chip. So it's got the cob array of how many chips has it got? It's got six cob chips. Um, so it goes full brightness. Medium brightness, which is clearly pulsed modulating because I can see it's, the iPad's picking up. And then it's got the irritating strobing function, which would be useful enough. So let's uh, take a look inside. I get the feeling there's not going to be much of a surprise. It also comes with a carabiner, which you could use to abseil down a mountain. OK, you'd probably plummet to your death at the bottom of the mountain, but it would make an interesting headline. So let's... Uh, get this uh, little clip off. Is that the best way to get a little clip off? Because I can see it looks like this thing's together in two halves that are probably clipped together. I don't know if they're clipped together or glued. I'm guessing they're clipped. They are clipped. That's uh, coming apart easier than expected, said Clive, speaking too soon because now it's not coming apart easier than expected. Are there any hidden... No, I don't think there's anything hidden in here. Ooh, it's very minimalist, isn't it? Okay, it's got the button at the end, it's got the contacts for the battery, it's got the... It's almost strange that uh, the cobs... It makes you think they could have put the cob virtually on the same board, couldn't they? But there's the cob with the usual arrangement, it's got the... Um, it's got the sort of little dam they've put round it of the white... hard material. Hardish, rubberish, uh, and then they flooded it over the chips with the uh, sort of the phosphor silicony type gel, and it is in an aluminium plate to help take the heat away. The chip does, is the chip going to have a number on it? Is it going to have a number? It does have a number. It says. HJ, uh, that was actually easier to read upside down. It looks like it says HJ6. Oh, I think that was easier to read upside down. HJ6. 
H drive six X one by the look of it. Uh, it's also got a little capacitor, which looks as though yeah, capacitors across the power supply rails. Uh, then it's got a one hundred and twenty. Well, no, a twelve ohm resistor. One two zero. That's one two and a zero multiplier at the end. That's fundamentally it. Uh, I'm not sure if this is going to actually. Let's uh, turn the light on in this and. Uh, let you take a look at that chip yourself. I don't think it's going to reveal any secrets, is it? No, it's not going to reveal much at all. No, it's it's one of those chips with that laser etched uh, text on it that just is hard to read. It's fundamentally what you'd expect. It is the little click switch. It's the little dedicated chip that controls the lights, but instead of actually having been buffered up through transistors around that, it's just controlling them directly. And it's the, the cob, the chip on board uh, array, which has six LEDs mounted directly onto the substrate in parallel. And you can actually see the bus bars are just straight, thick bus bars going along. But it's got solder pads at both ends. One of it's designed to extend along. Um, but yeah, it's, it's quite a neat construction. It was out of pound world. It cost a pound. Um, but other, you know, for that, it's quite smart. It's actually worth it just for things like the little cobbery and the little controller, because that could also be used to control other LEDs.